I see you, my friend, you're a relief teacher. You are a specialist who travels to different schools every single day. And it's really, really hard, isn't it? To get the evidence that you need to pass proficiency or full registration, let alone considering highly accomplished or lead. You are not alone. Thousands of educators just like you across Australia are suffering from the same overwhelm, the same questions and the same lack of support. So today it is an immense pleasure to share with you the story of Christina and she is a music educator who was working at the time with six different schools who has just submitted her evidence for full registration here in Australia. So tune in to hear her story and learn from everything that she has taken away where she put together an application with the Evidence Engine and Edufolios by her side. Hi, I'm Selena Woodward and I'm an English and Drama teacher, university lecturer and with Edufolios.org, a big time reflective practitioner. So how can reflective practice help you grow your teaching skills, fall in love with your profession all over again and help you nail accreditation and teacher registration with less stress and less work? Well, this is the Reflective Teacher Podcast. Welcome to another episode of the Reflective Teacher Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Selena Woodward, and today you may notice that I am not alone. I am joined today by Christina, who is one of the graduate members of our recent Evidence Engine cohort. I'm so excited that you're here, Christina. Welcome. <laughs> so Christina, hello, Christina, tell everybody who you are, what is your story? Yeah, so I'm Christina, I am a string specialist, a music teacher, so I teach the violin and the viola um, in different schools, private, private schools, but very different schools, and I take some ensembles as well. Yeah. yeah, awesome. Do you have a classroom of, of kids that you work with as well? Or is it just, is, I'm going to try and say it, peripatetic? Or is it, look at me, that's a big word. Or do so, you have a class one of, of kids? My schools, at one of my schools, I'm a peri teacher, peripatetic. <laughs> and I also take ensembles there. And at my other school, I also take a bit of classroom music. So they have whole classes ah. and then small group lessons. Um, yeah. Like groups of two to four students. And I also take class ensembles. So each class is an ensemble and I take the choir, which is around 60 kids and the orchestra that's around 60 kids as well. So, wow. So I want everyone to tune into the fact that Christina is a specialist educator. I get so many people who come to me and go, I can't do accreditation because I don't uh, listen to this story. She is an example of fabulousness for us all. I'm very proud of her. So Christina came and joined the Evidence Engine and completed it with me in the April 2022 cohort. Very excited to have her with us. Um, and we had so much fun together. She was a great member of the team, of the of the class. We learned like, so much together. Um, and I know that she has lots to celebrate and share. And as you know, I love to celebrate with educators. So I thought it would be really great to get Christina on the podcast and to share her journey with us about where she was at, what earth happened in that evidence engine mysterious thing and then where is she now so christina i want you i know it's uncomfortable but i want you to cast your mind back to where you were probably in march april early april of this year and you're sitting there thinking Ugh, accreditation i mean what career stage were you looking to do and and what was happening like what was the absolute biggest challenge that you had before you completed the Evidence Engine, what, why did you come to us? Yeah, so I knew that I really had to do proficiency, you know, the clock was ticking on that. And I didn't want to push it out anymore. So I was looking at going for proficiency and I was looking at different ways of doing it. And everybody said, you know, you can group your things by standard, you can group your things by evidence blocks. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. And it was so overwhelming. <laughs> And yeah. so I was looking for things to help me out. And I came across your yeah. blog, actually. And that's how I first okay. saw your podcast. Not your blog, your podcast. Yeah. And that's how I heard. And now you're on the podcast. Oh, my God. <laughs> and that's how I heard about the Evidence Engine. And I thought that Brilliant. sounds exactly like what I need. Yeah, absolutely. So what was the challenge then? Was it that you didn't know how to lay it out or what to write? Or what was it that was really 
It sounds really confusing. Is that what it was? What was yeah, happening? Yeah, it, it was. I didn't even know where to start. Because, mm, fair enough. I mean, I did get edit folios, which helped a bit, I have to say, or actually quite a bit, because that way I didn't even have to think about how I was going to lay it out. I was like, okay, you know, this is, this is a thing. Absolutely. I can do this. I don't have to worry about, you know, how do I group everything together? It's just there. So that was already it's very helpful. But then I was, yeah, you know, also looking good. at the standards and thinking, um, okay, like, where do I even start? Yeah, that's quite overwhelming, isn't it? When you're looking at 148, even though you've got to narrow it down to proficient mm. for yourself and there's 37, there's still 37 of the buggers, aren't there? Oh, my God, absolutely. So how did that make you feel as an educator? Do you think that impacted you in any way? How did that feel? Yes, I felt like it was really taking time away from my actual focus on my teaching. And I thought this seems uh -huh. kind of silly if it's supposed to be for my teaching that it's taking all this time away from, you know, my actual teaching and planning and all of that stuff. Yeah, it's awful when it feels like that, when it's a, it's an other. It felt very other by the sounds of it, like something else I have to do. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I bet that changed quite dramatically. So let's find <laughs> out. So you, you came to us and you joined in March with a cohort started in April. You came into the evidence engine. You came to every single coaching session, apart from one where we lost the link. I remember that. Yes. We felt so bad. Um, so you came to every single coaching session. You joined in. You had access to all the modules. You worked through them. What happened? What started to change for you? Well, I realized that the process is actually a part of your teaching because it's supposed <laughs> to reflect what you do in the classroom and how it impacts, you know, whoever that is at my level, my, me and my, my students, you know? Mm -hmm. And so pretty early on, I was like, okay, so I can just reflect and then figure out, you know, which standards I'm meeting through that. And then maybe I have to change some of my planning and make sure that I'm covering exactly what the standard covers, but I can do that in my teaching and it's not going to affect how I'm running my planning or how I'm doing my reflection and everything. And it actually works really well with my teaching and everything yes. I'm doing anyway. <laughs> so that was really good. Yeah. Once I figured that out through the evidence engine, I was very happy. <laughs> I guess that's very different to it's another thing I have to do. It became part of what you were doing anyway. Did that um, make it feel like less work? Or what, what, what do you mean? Is that like less, like it's not an extra thing, it's part of what I'm doing? Did it, did it help you save time? What was the impact of that for you? Um, well, it just felt like it was useful. Like I wasn't just wasting time on something else I had to do, you know, because I'm supposed, even though, okay. you know, we're supposed to reflect all the time, but sometimes we don't. But it was forcing me to reflect and do so actually, you know, consciously and not just think, oh, mm. was that good, was that bad? And actually think a bit more deeply about what was good, what went well, why did it go well, what was the impact? Yeah. And so I yeah. thought it actually was really helpful in even making me a better teacher, you know, not only reflecting what a good teacher I am, but also helping me to become even better. Yeah. How did it do that then? How did it help you become even better? Well... Through reflecting, I found which bits could have been better in my teaching, behavior management, all of those little things, you know, whereas usually I might just go mm -hmm. home at the end of the day and think, oh, that didn't work. But then because I was reflecting, I was thinking about why didn't it work or what did actually work? You know, what actually happened? Not just, oh, that wasn't good, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, through all that. And I think the evidence engine, because you went through step by step. And the really big part of it was the reflecting part and then looking at how it actually ties in with the standards. So that really helped me in that way. So do you think the standards have become more friendly for you now? What was your opinion of the standards before and after the evidence engine? Has that changed? <laughs> yes, they just seemed really abstract <laughs> before. Okay. I was like, okay, so yeah. it's words, many words that were just kind of there. <laughs> and now, you know, it helped me to with the color coding and everything and also looking at different examples and like which part of the standards were covered and were not covered. It helped me to really understand the standards a lot more and figure out what they're actually trying to say and how you can show them because, <laughs> you know, the TRB has examples 
of evidence that yeah. you can have for each standard. But even just looking at that, well, it's a bit of a wall of text, but also it doesn't really explain how it all ties in. And I find you, you explained yeah. really well how actually the evidence supports the standard. Yeah, or vice versa. You know, you're mm -hmm. talking about how you were able to identify gaps in your practice um, or even just tweaks that you needed to make to transform what was going on in your classroom. Do you think the standards had any part to play in that? Yes, yeah. Um, and especially how? as I got tell to Tell everyone, the... because no one believes me. No <laughs> one believes me. So tell, tell us how. How does that happen? So for me, I could see which standards I wasn't meeting entirely or not at all and I could see okay yeah. so they're a standard for a reason obviously there must be a reason this is a standard and I could look at we hope so uh, presumably <laughs> there's a reason it's there and I think they they, they they are all good standards or like you know I've only looked at the wow. proficiency ones mostly yeah. but <laughs> so I don't know about the HA ones or whatever yeah. but my standards I thought they're good that you should be if you're a good teacher you are meeting those standards anyway you know but it helped yeah, me figure out which yeah. ones I wasn't meeting as much just in my everyday teaching and how I could bring more of those in like yeah I remember I can't remember if it was the very last session we did or somewhere near the end we had a whole thing about our thing so part of the evidence engine for those of you who may join us in the future or have done it already and want to reminisce mm -hmm. is uh, where we look at the data that the reflections have pulled out and I always say that every one of us has a thing that we're obsessed with but we may mm -hmm. not even be aware of it we always talk about it and we have our shadow thing that we would like to just put our fingers in our ears and ignore can you remember what what did that reveal to you? Is that because that was really funny? We were having lots of fun going. My thing is this. <laughs> what was your thing? What my did it thing turn out to be? Was um, the content. Yeah. I just like love the content, know the content, ah. really good at teaching it in many different ways. So yeah, and also knowing the students. So yeah. knowing the content and, and knowing the students, those are my strong points. And then some yeah, of the other things. and what were your shadow selves? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so mine, I think, are were assessing I think yeah but uh -huh, it's not so much uh -huh. assessing itself just planning the assessment and you know having it uh -huh. all planned out beforehand <laughs> and everything and I noticed gotcha. that when I was doing trying to write some I was writing reflection and I was saying in one of the sessions as well like oh I think I've covered the standard but actually I haven't because I haven't developed the assessment <laughs> I've just done the assessment yes <laughs> Yes, that's yeah. right. And that's what we teach you, isn't it? To really look at the details in the focus areas. That is one way people fall over all the time and yes. they think they've got to pass and they haven't looked at that verb. <laughs> what is it you're meant to be doing? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because yeah, I, I thought, that. oh, I, I get... covered this standard and then I looked at it and I thought, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you, did you get more, more of that as you worked with your peer coach? Because in module five, everybody swaps evidence you know yes. and did you find that you were able to use the standards to reveal that for someone else or did mm. that reveal something for you as well so with my post that I got um I thought I had covered the standard I can't remember what standard it is now but uh, like but I'd only just hinted at it I hadn't covered it at all but there were <laughs> three or four other standards that I didn't realize I had covered yes. and they were actually in there yep. so that was so yep. helpful and it was the same you know there were bits where like actually you haven't really got any evidence for this but these other standards they're in there and you haven't mentioned them so yeah and do you feel like you can do that for others now do you feel like yes. you can review other people yeah absolutely it's going to be so powerful on your path to HA I know that you have something to celebrate but I'm already on the next career stage for you <laughs> <laughs> so on that note you completed the evidence engine I think we would have finished that one at sort of end of May uh, no June it was almost June wasn't June, it when yeah. we finished up um what what results have you had considering it's now um July the end of July <laughs> what results can you report what have what can you share with us what has changed for you having completed the evidence engine so I submitted my portfolio to my deputy principal to my school and she wrote lovely things about me and so it's all submitted to the PRB and we're just waiting but I'm sure it's going to get approved so I will have achieved proficiency Yay! and I'm really excited so you've, you've, 
so good. I'm After, really you know, 10 years of teaching, finally. <laughs> <sighs> 10 years of avoiding it, let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. So what what changed then, you know? Like how come you were able to go from oh my god, I'm so overwhelmed and I hate this and the standards are a waste of time and it's an other thing and you've changed so much. I mean, how do you feel about the process now? What's changed? Um to be honest, I think it's all like the evidence engine. I'm so glad and I'm so I'm so lucky the timing was just perfect for me, you know. I managed to just slide <laughs> in there and it wasn't too late, luckily. <laughs> was able to get in there yeah and yeah find it helpful and yeah because before that I'm sure I would have been able to do it you know but it would have been a painful process yeah okay yeah it sounds like it because you decided it was other you decided it was separate from what mm. you were doing you didn't know how to lay it out or or how to have the conversation with your assessor I guess in a way and I know you know what was the response did you submit it in edufolios how did you go with that what was the response yeah. of the assessor for you so I submitted my edufolios the link and also the heat map mm -hmm. which was so useful for me as well yeah when I was great. finishing up because I could see which ones I had more of and which ones I had less of um, and also a yeah, PDF yeah, version course. because you can export the PDF through Edufolios. Um, and my yep. deputy principal said she looked at the website and she found it so easy to use. And she said it was a fantastic way to show what I know and what I can do. Um, you know, I thanked her a few times for her because she gave me really good feedback. It was just lovely and great across oh, the board. Oh, that's beautiful. And so I thanked that's her. So she you said, deserve it. Of course you do. <laughs> And she said, you know, thank you. It was so easy to assess because she could see exactly what was yeah, there. And, beautiful. you know, you can click on the standards or you can click on the post. And with the heat map, she could see, you know, which standards I had covered in each post and click on the post through that. And she said it was so easy yep. to use. Of course. I'm so pleased. I'm so glad for you. That's so good. So if anyone is listening and they know the evidence engine is coming up and they're like, oh, have I got time? It's an investment of time and money. Oh, I don't know if I'm ready. Do I have enough evidence? What if I wait till <laughs> the moon is in its fourth quarter? And you know, all the things that we tell ourselves. What would you say to someone who might be sitting on the fence and isn't sure whether they should go ahead or not? Yeah, well, I would say, I mean, I was talking to a friend who had previously done proficiency and she said, oh, it doesn't sound like something I would need because, you know, it's just, you're just ticking boxes. But I think even if you are just doing proficiency to tick the boxes, it will make it easier. And if you're hoping to get something mm -hmm. more out of it than just ticking boxes, but you're not sure how you can do that, then the evidence engine will definitely help you with that. So no matter what, no matter who you are, mm -hmm. and even I think, especially from seeing what other people were doing, if you're going for HA, it would be so helpful as well. Mm -hmm. because... Do you think you could go for HA with everything you've learned? Yeah. Just want to watch the space? Like, do you... Yeah? <laughs> yeah. yeah? Do you I think mean, you've got... Because you entered it with sufficient. First, do you but... think there's a... Okay, all right. We'll let you, we'll let you have a year. <laughs> Maybe two. <laughs> but two years, you'll be able to have it. You know, do you think you've got the skills though now yeah. to proactively collect that evidence and just one day go, oh crap, I've got a lot of HA here. Oh, yeah. I might as well apply. Yeah. And you... um, yeah, that's what we do. Hmm. I really want to keep, you know, keeping up the reflecting and looking back on everything. So, because it's so nice to yeah, have there, even just so to look cute. back yourself, even if you never submit it to anyone, just to see yeah. where you were, just where you are now. Yeah. And celebrate the difference, the growth. Absolutely. And even the things you learn in the evidence engine about seeing an impact, mm -hmm. measuring impact, planning for impact, how to analyze what you're writing so that you can see, like you say, where your growth spots are. You know, even that, regardless of whether you submit for accreditation or not, is incredibly valuable to any professional in any professional teacher because it positions you as the learner in your own classroom and it makes it so much more fun. Like it's so curious. You're like, oh, I wonder, let me tweak it here. You know, would you agree with that? That's what I see happening anyway yeah. with everybody yeah. who comes in. <laughs> also, it was funny yeah. in some ways because yeah. sometimes I do things just because I like doing them or because, you know, I, I think they're fun. But then it forced me to look at it and say, is this actually the best thing for my students or am I just doing this because it's what I want to do? And so in some cases, it's actually the best thing for the students. <laughs> oh, in some hard. cases, it's probably like, 
you know, they're probably, you know, they, they'll enjoy mm, it. Questionable. But the time could probably be used better in a different way. So in that way, the evidence engine yeah. was actually really good as well, because it forced me to look, yes, at the impact and say, actually, yeah. and really <laughs> the impact that. there is probably, yeah. you know, not really the best use of time. <laughs> So you're saving time too because yeah. you're not doing things that are not getting you where you need to go. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so good. It's so good. Well, congratulations on submitting your portfolio for proficient. Congratulations on completing the evidence engine. It was so fun. Mm -hmm. It's such an honor to coach you and work with you. I obviously want you to keep in touch. I will email you in a year and go, how's that HA evidence <laughs> going? You know I will. <laughs> and thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing your very cool and inspirational story story if you are watching this and you're a specialist and you're like i go to so many schools and blah 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 well then christina did it she did it so you know don't let that hold you back at all is there anything else that you would add christina before we wrap up the podcast yeah well absolutely if you're a specialist you can do it even if you're at you know five different schools um because previously now i'm lucky i'm at two schools <laughs> But previously, I've been at six different schools and looking at what we did in the evidence engine, absolutely, it would make it so much easier how to do it. Because when I was yeah. at two schools, I don't know, without the evidence engine, I don't know how I would have done it when I was at that many schools, you know. But I think with the evidence engine, yeah, I okay. would have been able Why? to go through the process. Yeah. Why is that? What is it about the evidence engine that helped you with the six schools thing? Hmm. Well, you really explained I'm curious. <laughs> where you can actually, you know, get evidence. You don't necessarily have to have a classroom and, you know, do the traditional way. You, you can get evidence everywhere in all of your teaching situations. Yeah, okay. So just making the impact visible. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Oh, I love that. Okay, cool. Thank you for telling me that. That's awesome. Well, again, thank you so much for your time. Absolute honor to have you here everybody watching this please comment below and say christina your celebration and love for all the work that she does thank you so much thank you for having me